Hello, this is just a, a short video about how to answer the evaluation questions of your first paper, paper one in AS. Um, <clears throat> a lot of people panic when they see these ones at the end of the paper. So they've gone through all the short questions and maybe a six and eight marker at the end of the paper and then they see this 10 marker and then they see it as, as one of the most difficult questions. And actually, if you think about it, um, your short questions are the most difficult ones, I think. Um, uh, in terms of uh, it's because you know them or you don't you know there's a lot of uh, factual knowledge that you need to know a lot of memorization uh, but these ones um, the 10 markers um, you can get away with um, maybe um, a little bit more of um, I don't know vagueness but a, a little bit more of a discussion and still get um, some sort of uh, good grade or you can achieve a lot of marks in this one. So there's a few things that you need to do before you actually start the essay. The first thing that you need to do is that you need to read the question properly. So they're always going to evaluate. They're always going to ask you for two and two, for two strengths and two weaknesses. Um, and they're always going to ask you to include uh, an issue that they want you to include. And that's usually stated at the end of the question. So for example, this question I made it up, so just for this example, for this video, um, evaluate what Bandura, so evaluate Bandura study into child aggression in terms of two strengths and two weaknesses. And one of your evaluations needs to be about the validity of the study. So what do you need to do? Um, is the key thing here, or one of the key things that you need to think about is your stated issue. If you don't answer that stated issue, if you don't include it in your essay, what happens is that you lose significant amount of marks. They cap you. Uh, so you might uh, answer a beautiful essay with two strengths and two weaknesses, but you didn't include the one that is stated in the question and yet you get capped and you lose, um, you lose some marks. So uh, what I would suggest is that uh, if you do, um, you know, 30 second, one minute planning for your essay, to plan for that issue first. So in your head, make sure that you're going to answer that issue in your first paragraph. That would be my suggestion. So your first paragraph should be about the stated issue. Because why? You know, during the examination conditions, you get nervous, you get tired. Um, you've had enough of this year already um, and then you start planning and then you start writing and then you forget about that issue and then unfortunately you end up losing some marks so start by the issue that is stated in the question uh, because that will that is like a game uh, you open the gate for more marks if you answer if you include that issue first another thing that I would uh, suggest I know it's not a long it's not long before your exams, but maybe it's something that you need to think about A2 or maybe if you're going to university later. Is to give um, evaluative paragraphs some sort of structure. Um, there's many structures out there. Um, I like to use P, a point, explanation and evidence or evidence and explanation. Um, sometimes in A2, I like to use appeal. You know, you add a link to your uh, to your point again uh, but there's other ones out there that you can that your teacher uh, different teachers tend like to teach you know if you're taking another subject like English or something um, but any is try to standardize your paragraphs um, a level of automaticity a level of automation when you write in your essays uh, saves time uh, it helps you be better in your in your exams when you are in terms of time keeping you become more efficient with the with the limited amount that you have to write these papers, right? So, for example, if you take a look at that uh, paragraph in front of you, the color coded one, um, there's three sections that I think um, you need to include in each of these four paragraphs in order to get most of your marks. Uh, the first one is your point. So here, for you, um, your point will be your strength or your weakness. Um, it needs to be relevant. It needs to be appropriate for the for the question, for the study in the question. Um, then after that, you need to provide a little bit of an explanation of why, or what is that issue. Just don't um, name drop into your essay. Just explain a little bit more. Just explain what validity, reliability, or 
ecological validity, whatever your issue is, explain it a little, a little bit better, a little bit more in detail, and explain why you think it's a strength and a weakness. So you're providing some sort of explanation for your for your point. And then after that, um, provide an example or your evidence or your context uh, for your point. So um, you you are answering the question in a very structured way. And I'll tell you why I like this particular structure. Um, because the orange bit and the green bit can be applied to any study. It's, it's, it's a standardized, it's a very general in, a start to a paragraph. Um, and it's very standardized. Uh, so that means that if you were to evaluate another, you know, Canley, for example, uh, you can still, obviously the name changes. Uh, there's a typo here. Uh, the name changes uh, to Canley, for example, but um, the rest of it is the same. So if you learned um, almost, uh, you know, this sort of structure for lab experiments and, and controls, which I'm going to explain now in a bit, um, you'll be able to sort of practice it so many times that this will become uh, automatic to you and then you're going to be able to write it very quickly in the exam and save some time. Then the only thing that changes is obviously your context, is your explanation, your, your evidence. Uh, that changes obviously because you cannot be talking about Bandura if you're going to talk about uh, if you're going to evaluate Canley. So uh, make sure that you give your paragraph some sort of structure. It's nothing worse than reading a paragraph that is free flowing that doesn't have any structure. Um, for the marker, uh, it is a, it is a nightmare to mark, but also for you, uh, it fills you up with anxiety. You're free flowing and you leave the exam with some sort of uncertainty, with a level of uncertainty because you're not sure if you wrote all the stuff that you should have written. Okay, so uh, let me explain a little bit more in depth the paragraph. So, um, like I was saying, the orange bit or the brown bit, I don't know how, what color it is, um, will be my issue that is stated in the question. So. One strength of Bandura is that it's a lab experiment. This means that it can be considered to be valid. Uh, validity refers to how closely a researcher is measuring what he claims to be measuring. So that's my point. That's a very general point about validity. That's what it is. Uh, I'm not just naming uh, validity. I'm just adding a little bit of description of what it is. And then I go into my explanation. So validity can be achieved uh, through the use of experimental controls. This is because lab experiments take several steps to minimize the effects of extraneous variables becoming confounding variables and adding confusion to the final result. That is my explanation. Okay, um, I'm telling you why validity might be a desirable thing to have in a study and how it can be achieved. And again, like I mentioned before, this Explanation can be used for any lab experiment or for any study that has some sort of level of control uh, over the extraneous variables. So if you manage to do that um, and to learn it in that way, then you what you can do is like you can st standardize that process and, and save some time. And then obviously the blue bit here is my explanation, my evidence, sorry, uh, my context. So in Bandura's study uh, of aggression, he took steps to measure pre-existing levels of aggression of the children and matching the groups. If he hadn't, it is possible to imagine that these levels of aggression could have become confounding variables, as it would have been difficult to separate the effects of the procedure, so what he wanted to do, versus the effects of aggression participants brought into the study, and that could have affected the dependent variable. So it could have added a little bit of confounding effects to the final results. So as you can see here, you don't need to write too much. Obviously you need to know your issues and debates and they need to reach a level that you're going to be able to standardize a paragraph. But really, uh, I think as opposed to, you know, some of the two mark questions or three mark questions or four mark questions that you actually have to know the knowledge almost word by word, this essays actually allow you to a little bit more freedom to explain and still achieve um, you know, higher marks. 
Okay, so that's the first paragraph. I'm going to go and, and explain it again with a weakness. Um, and then uh, finish this video because I'm not going to go through the entire thing. So a weakness of the study um, of Bandura is that it can be considered to be somewhat unethical. So ethics are rules researchers need to follow in order to make sure participants are kept safe. Uh, one important ethical rule is sorry is the potential is the protection from physiological from physical and psychological harm. Uh, in the Bandura study, children were exposed to violent modeling, which, if Bandura is correct, it could have affected their later behavior negatively. So arguably, this would have broken the protection from psychological harm, as we don't there's a few typos here, as we don't have any evidence that the effects of aggressive model was follow up. Should have should have said there, followed up, or countered, acted after the end of the study so if you if you get this um if you manage to do this and if you manage to get your point your explanation and your context um you should get uh, a nice amount of marks and then get a nice grade okay so i hope that helps see you soon